بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off uh, before the month of Ramadan and that was towards the end of this first lesson regarding the uh, regarding the nullifiers of al-islam and the sheikh was discussing um the most important nullifier which is shirk and what does shirk mean so the sheikh was explaining in the last lesson lesson three um what shirk was and he continues to explain it to us in this lesson so this lesson will be fairly short no more than 20 to 30 minutes so we can complete um, and reach the second lesson within the book, second lesson there within this book, although it's taken us uh, three lessons to get here. So um, let's continue, inshallah, from where we left off. So the Shaykh, he says, قَالَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ الشِّرْكُ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ أَيْ تَسْوِيَةُ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِاللَّهِ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ اللَّهِ في إبادة الله التي هي حق الله على الإباد أو على العبيد وهنا هذا المقام للسلامة من هذا الناقض الشرك في عبادة الله يحتاج العبد إلى نوعين من المعرفة لا بد منهما. So the Sheikh he says and he quotes the original author Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله he says he quotes him he says and he says, may Allah have mercy upon him, that shir- shirk in worship, in worship Allah, or the sh- shirk that's associated with regards to, or linked to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the shaykh explains this term in Arabic, we'll, we'll translate it. The shaykh, he says, basically, what does that mean? Shirk in worship of Allah. What does shirk in worship of Allah mean? And he says, basically, when you um, have something else and you raise it to the same level of uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship in the worship of Allah that which is from his rights upon his servants and then he says the shaykh he says here and he says that this and when we understand this then it, it basically it brings about safety safety and protection from falling into this nullifier. And then he quotes, a shirku fi ibadatillah, committing shirk uh, on, uh, in, in the worship of Allah. And he says that the, the servant of Allah, he requires, he says, the servant needs to know two things. He needs to know two things with regards to this. And he says, the first, he says, al-ula, ma'rifatu shirki bi ma'rifat, bi ma'rifatin haqiqiyatihi. Or بِمَعْرِفَةِ حَقِيقِيَتِهِ وَثَانِيَةً مَعْرِفَةُ الْعِبَادَةِ بِمَعْرِفَةِ أو بِمَعْرِفَةٍ حَقِيقَةٍ حَقِيقَةِ الْإِبَادَةِ وَأَفْرَادُ الْإِبَادَةِ So the so he says the Sheikh says the, the first point of the, of the two points that we need to be aware of he says the first point is knowing what shirk is and knowing its true meaning and having the proper knowledge in reality of what shirk actually is and he says second the second point is knowing what worship is and he says knowing the reality and the facts with regards to worship and that is mentions here singling out worship i.e singling out allah with all worship so none of our worship goes to anybody else they own all acts of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is what the shaykh is saying here. And, and that's the second point. The first point is actually knowing what shirk is. And, and the second point, knowing what worship is. If you know what those two are, you save yourself from falling into it. 
And so we need to know what it is. And the Sheikh, he continues. He says, فَيَعْرِفَ الشِّرْكِ لِيَتَّقِيَهُ وَيَعْرِفَ الْإِبَادَةَ لِيُخْلِصَهَا لِلَّهِ Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, so what's the fruits or what's the result of knowing what shirk in reality, in its reality in totality, what it is, and, and knowing what um, worship is in actual fact. Knowing those two points, if you have knowledge of those two properly and comprehensively, then you will know what shirk actually is and you'll by, thereby you'll be able to stay away from it. You'll be able to Fear from falling into it you'll, you'll be able to avoid it You'll be able to avoid falling into shirk And you'll know worship And you'll know the meaning The true meaning of what worship actually means Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So that you can uh, Basically Purely worship Allah And concentrate all of that worship Only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It doesn't go to anybody else Or anything else From the living or the dead or from anything within the the world, you know, whether it be a stone or a tree or some kind of charm that people wear around their neck um, or anything else, a jinn, you know, a, a man, a woman, a tree, a stone, anything. You don't, you don't basically take away any part of your worship to other than Allah. It all goes to Allah. Whenever you worship, you only worship Allah in totality. And that is the meaning of Tawheed, as, 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 as you know, as you know from previous books, inshallah. So the Shaykh, he brings uh, some evidences for us uh, to uh, ponder over. The f uh, so I'll just read all of them and then we'll go through the meanings. So the first evidence is from Surah al bayna verse 5. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ The second uh, verse or ayah is from Surah al dhariyat verse 56. The second evidence. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ uh, most of us should be aware of this one. And the third ayah on evidence, Wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bihi shay'a is from the starting of the verse of verse 36 in Surah An-Nisa. And the final evidence just in this paragraph is Waqada Rabbuka Allah Ta'budu illa iyahu and that's from the beginning of the verse uh, 23 uh, from Surah Al-Isra. And so if you look at uh, the Translations of those and uh, the meanings, uh, then inshallah, you will see that the following the meanings are as follows. Let's see. Okay, let's have a look. Inshallah, bear with me one second while I pull the translation up. So, Surah Al Bayyina was the first surah. Let's have a look. And they were commanded not but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone, abstaining from ascribing partners to Him. Right? So that's the first, first, the beginning of the ayah 5 in Surah Al-Bayyina. Then let's go to the next evidence that was quoted by the Shaykh, Hafizullah. He said, uh, verse 56 in Dhariyat, and that's where Allah says that I did not create the jinn nor mankind except that they worship me. So this is the primary purpose that we were created, the jinn and mankind were created for, they were created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Yeah? And then we have from Surah An-Nisa that which mentions uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah says oh you uh, in, in plural worship Allah in the plural command worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't uh, ascribe any partners with him in worship. Yeah, clear. That's clear as well. And then uh, the uh, final evidence in this paragraph was from Surah, uh, Surah Al-Isra Verse 23, where uh, the Shaykh he mentions this ayah, and which we read as well, Waqala Rabbuka Allah Ta'budu illa iyah. That Allah has decreed and your Lord has decreed that you uh, don't worship anything except Him. Yeah? And so you can see from these uh, verses, it's very clear what the meaning of shirk and tawheed means, right? The Shaykh he continues, he says, فَيَعْرِفَ الْإِبَادَةَ لِيُخْلَصَهَا لِلَّهِ وَيَعْرِفَ الشِّرْكِ لِيَتَّقِيَهُ فَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ نَوْعَيْنِ مِنْ الْمَعْرِفَةِ الشِّرْكِ لِيُتَّقَى وَيُشْتَنَبْ وَالْإِبَادَةُ لِتُخْلَصَ لِتُخْلَصَ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So then the Shaykh says, as you can see from what we've read and what he's explained, that knowing 
what worship means, then it enab- once we know what worship means, it enables us to single Allah out in all worship and make our worship purely for Him. Pure. Yeah? Yeah? And uh, and knowing shirk and having knowledge of what shirk actually is, then we're able to avoid it. And so the shaykh says, as you see, it's important and incumbent upon us to know these two types or have these two types of knowledge within this category what we're talking about. Uh, in order for us to um, stay away from shirk and avoid it and also understanding worship and thereby worshipping Allah purely and alone and not associating any associating any partners with him in worship. So then the shaykh he continues, he says, وَالْإِبَادَةُ إِسْمٌ جَامِعٌ لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ من الأقوال والأعمال الظاهرة والباطنة فالعبادة كلمة جامعة من التعبد وهو التذلل والخضوع يقال طريق معبد أي مذلل ذللته الأقدام ووطعته الأقدام ويقال ناقة معبدة أي مذللة مذللة للركوب فالعبادة الظل والخضوع لله سبحانه وتعالى والانكسار بين يديه فهي اسم جامع لكل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من الأقوال والأعمال الظاهرة والباطنة. So in this paragraph we need to pay particular attention. Very important points being mentioned here. So the Sheikh he says al ibada worship. He, he defines it for us. He says it's an all encompassing term. The al ibada al ibada worship is an all encompassing term. Right? In that which Allah loves. All that which Allah loves. So worship is all that which Allah loves and is pleased with. From whether it be speech or physical actions. Apparent and hidden. Yeah, apparent and hidden. And he says here, the Sheikh says, Al-Ibadah, the word worship, it's a, it's a comprehensive term. With regards to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Or worship the action itself And he says it also means to lower yourself And humble yourself You know like lowering yourself And humbling yourself And then he brings some Also brings some uh, Linguistic meanings Of what that means as well He says for example Like a lowered or a paved Or a flat paved, paved way For example Lowered and flat paved way In reference to the word at the Al uh, meaning like lowering and humbling yourself, lowering yourself, um, and also brings um, uh, other evidences with regards to what that meaning is. But uh, inshallah, that suffices for us uh, in uh, understanding uh, uh, the English words, at least, um, as in lowering yourself and humbling yourself. And the Sheikh says that worship it is lowering yourself and humbling yourself in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah, um, and he says that, so then going back to the initial statement he made, he says that this word, worship, ibadah, it's an all comprehensive term in that uh, that which Allah loves and is pleased with from what is said, from what is done in terms of actions, whether they be out in the open or hidden. And that's what that means. So it's quite important to understand that meaning uh, of, of, of worship. Because that helps us understand how uh, we can stay on the right path in terms of our worship. And also we can understand and avoid falling into errors. And it will also help us understand why other people that are, or what we may have heard of or read or seen of other people. That how they fall into uh, other than this because of knowing the proper terminology. Yeah, we can apply it inshallah. So then the Sheikh he goes on. To say, وَالْأَقْوَالُ مِنْهَا أَقْوَالُ ظَاهِرَةٌ وَمِنْهَا أَقْوَالٌ بَاطِنَةٌ وَالْأَعْمَالُ أَيْذًا مِنْهَا أَعْمَالٌ ظَاهِرَةٌ وَأَعْمَالٌ بَاطِنَةٌ وَكُلُّهَا عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ الْبَاطِنَةِ الْعَقِيدَةُ الَّتِي يَأْتَقِدُوهَا الْمُسْلِمُ فِي قَلْبِهِ قال الله تعالى قولوا آمنا بالله أي قولوا بقلوبكم معتقدين وبألسنتكم ناتقين ومتلفظين 
فالأقوال الباطنة التي تكون في قلب الإنسان قوله في نفسه بأن يعتقد ما أمره الله عز وجل باعتقاده والإيمان به وكذلك قوله بلسانه كل الأقوال التي تقال باللسان داخلة في الإبادة ولا سيما أساس الإبادة وهو كلمة التوحيد لا إله إلا الله So in this paragraph the Shaykh goes on to explain he says to us and from the sayings or your speech when you say والأقوال he says from them are things that you say out in the open apparent and there are those things that are said which are not apparent hidden not not heard yeah and not out in the apparent and he says likewise there are actions also which are actions that are apparent actions and those actions which are which are hidden one and he says that all of this is uh, is all constitutes worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says from those so he gives his examples now he says from the apparent things that we say that are, 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 that are worship, where he says, sorry, those which are hidden, for example, those things or beliefs or things that we might say that are within the heart, for example, that we don't say outwardly, then those things are associated with the following. For example, the belief, the belief that you have, the belief that a Muslim has in his heart, the belief within his heart, and and the Sheikh gives us an example from the Quran from Surah Al Baqarah. Say that you have believed in Allah, that you believe in Allah. Say, O Muslims, that you believe in Allah. Uh, and the Sheikh says, i.e., say with your with your hearts, in your hearts, and in belief, your hearts are believing, and say on your tongues and pronounce it as well. So don't just say in your heart only, but also on your tongues and pronounce it. So it starts from the heart. So your belief is in the heart, and then you say it as well because you say what you what, what you believe, what's in your heart, yeah. With your tongues, pronouncing it and saying that you believe in Allah. For example, the Sheikh also goes on to give us examples then of uh, uh, and continues in his so the hidden or those uh, things that we say or we may mention within ourselves within our heart. For example, uh, he says that. This is in the heart of a person, of a human. That he says it in himself. He says it to himself. Basically, let's say, let's use the English word. That you know when you say something to yourself. You're not talking, but you're talking to yourself. But you're not pronouncing. You're just saying it within yourself. And this is what he means. And he says uh, that, that he says these things to himself with regards to his belief. And what Allah is commanding with uh, Azza wa Jal. Uh, and as Iman. Obviously, Iman within the heart and belief within the heart. And he says, like that, you also, from the apparent actions, is that you you also pronounce it on your tongue, that you say that you believe. You actually say, like we're saying now, when we're speaking, we say on our tongues, we pronounce these beliefs on our tongues. And the Sheikh says that every speech which is said on the tongue, it is, it is, within, it is within a worship. So whatever you say on your tongue, yeah? Then that's also counted as worship with regards to the terminology that was mentioned earlier. Yeah. And the Sheikh also says, especially, uh, uh, worship, which is, which is actually, uh, uh, w- which is the kalima of tawheed, as in the shahada, the first shahada, la ilaha illallah. When you say la ilaha illallah, then you pronounce your faith and you clarify your, your faith that, uh, that you're saying what you're actually saying. La ilaha illallah, that there is none, there is none worthy of worship in truth, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and that's what that meaning, uh, la ilaha illallah actually means. The scholars explain, they say, it, this is, if you translate into English, the proper translation is, that there is none worthy of worship in truth, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, that's a proper translation for it. It's not, um, as some people mention, uh, no God but God, uh, uh, non worthy of worship uh, except Allah. That's almost correct. But in the Arabic, there's a, th- th- there's basically a sentence within La ilaha illallah that's understood by the Arabic speaking person who knows Arabic. Um, um, 
properly will know that there's the, the meaning of that as in truth because we, we, we don't see haq but it means that right because we know that there's none worthy of worship in truth except Allah why because he's the one who created everything he's the one who has created everything and he's deserved of all worship right so uh, we'll get to the final paragraph inshallah and then we'll finish off today well, it's obviously a shorter lesson today but we'll continue next week with the with the new lesson and it'll be a bit longer inshallah so the Shaykh, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ الْأَعْمَالُ الظَّاهِرَ وَالْبَاطِنَ دَاخِلَةٌ فِي الْإِبَادَةِ الْأَعْمَالُ الْبَاطِنَ مِثْلُ الْحَيَاءَ وَالتَّوَكُّلُ وَالْخَشْيَةِ وَالْإِنَابَ وَالْرَجَاءِ وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ وَالْأَعْمَالُ الظَّاهِرَ مِثْلُ الصَّلَاحِ وَالْحَجْ مِثْلُ الصَّلَاحِ وَالْحَجْ وَالْجِهَادِ وَالصَّدَقَةِ وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ هَذِهِ قُلُّهَا دَاخِلَةٌ فِي الْإِبَادَةِ فَالْإِبَادَةُ إِسْمٌ جَامِعٌ لَيْسَتْ الْإِبَادَةُ شَيْءٌ فِي الْقَلْبِ فَقَط وَلَا فِي اللِّسَانِ فَقَط وَلَا أَيْضًا فِي الْجَوَارِحِ فَقَط بل بل العبادة في القلب واللسان والجوارح القلب يعبد الله واللسان يعبد الله والجوارح تعبد الله كلها تذل لله سبحانه وتعالى وأساس هذه القلب So we need to pay attention to this section because this is very important and uh, people do make a lot of mistakes easily fall into error uh, with regards to understanding this, so uh, pay particular attention to this paragraph as well. So the Sheikh says, like that, the apparent outward actions and the inward actions are all, all they all are under worship. They all come under worship, and he says that the inward hidden actions. He gives us examples. What are they? He gives us some examples of what those will be. The inward uh, actions, um, and they are. Um, having shyness, trust, putting trust in Allah, having shyness, fearing Allah, um, and you know, uh, repenting to Allah in honesty, repenting and returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and other than that. And he says, from the outward and apparent actions, then the examples are as follows the prayer, as in you praying, for example, your five daily prayers, praying. Al-Hajj, performing the Hajj, the pilgrimage. Al-Jihad, fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving in charity, a sadaqa, and other than that. It says these, all of them, they come under worship. They are all acts of worship. So he says that worship is a, a, an all-encompassing term. As mentioned earlier, the Sheikh mentioned earlier, he says, Ibadah it isn't a thing in the heart only. Worship isn't a thing in your heart only. Nor is it a thing on your tongue only. Nor is it actions on your limbs only. Rather, worship it is in the heart, on your tongue, and by way of your actions of your limbs. He says the heart, it worships Allah. The tongue, it worships Allah. And your, your limbs, they also worship Allah depending on your actions, what you do. All of this, all of these, these, these three that I mentioned, the heart, the tongue, and your limbs, they all lower themselves to Allah. That you lower yourself in you lower yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh says the foundation of this is the qalb, is the heart. And the Shaykh mentions a hadith. We'll read in Arabic just in green. You can see in the highlighted green text. As we, it's a well-known hadith, but we'll, we'll go through as the Shaykh's mentioned it. It's always good to remind ourselves if we if we already know it, and if we don't, then it's good to learn about this hadith and its meaning. So the Shaykh, he says, he mentions the hadith with regards to evidence that the heart is the foundation and the basis of these three. Of these three. So the heart, it starts in the heart and it can end up on your tongue or in, on your limbs or both. Yeah. The actions that is um, of worship. So the Shaykh he mentioned the hadith, Allah, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, Allah inna fil jasadi mudghatan ida salahat salah al jasadu kulluhu wa ida fasadat fasad al jasadu kulluhu Allah wa hi al qalb. He said that indeed in our body, in the body there is a a morsel or a piece of flesh, small piece of flesh, if it is upright and rectified, or is upright, 
then the rest of the body will be upright and rectified. And if it is corrupted, if this small piece of flesh is corrupted, then the rest of the body will be corrupted. And he said, it is, and indeed, and without a doubt, it is the heart. And that's the evidence there that the Sheikh has given us and is clear to us when, we, when we've understood this, that is the heart. And every, every, everything be, begins in the heart, right? So, so it's important to understand these meanings properly, inshallah. And hopefully that's been a clear explanation from the Sheikh for us and hopefully a clear translation of that uh, today, inshallah. So then the Sheikh, he says, uh, finally, on his, in his last paragraph, وَفِي لِقَاءِ الْغَدْ بِإِنِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ نُوَاصِلُ الْحَدِيثَ عَنْ هَذَا النَّاقِذَ الْأَوَّلْ مِنْ نَوَاقِذَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَنَقْتَفِي إِلَى هُنَا بِهَذَا الْقَدْرِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى عَبْدِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَالِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ So then the Shaykh says, obviously this was a live lesson being given elsewhere and this is a transcription of the lesson. I believe it would have been in, uh, in the, uh, the Prophet's Masjid. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in uh, Medina So the Shaykh mentions that tomorrow we'll continue uh, With uh, finishing off uh, This first Nullifah of Islam regarding Shirk uh, Obviously for us it will be next Friday inshallah Next week uh, And then the Shaykh says that this is sufficient for today's lesson uh, And and then he says that Allah knows best And then he sends salutations And uh, uh, salutations to the uh, on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, And, and and uh, the people who follow him and his companions and all of them. So then the Sheikh finishes off with that. And inshallah, we'll finish here as well. Uh, I'll put the recording up, uh, inshallah, shortly uh, in, in the group for anybody who's missed the lesson. So inshallah, we'll continue same time for now, nine o'clock um, uh, on Friday with the Ta'ala. Subhanakullahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ilant wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته